Hi friends, today I am going to complete the chapter address the rest of the part. So let's start. I followed the girl along the passage, an old fashioned iron Hanukkah candle holder hung next to a mirror. We never used to it because it was much more sumbersome than a single candlestick. Won't you sit down? asked the girl. She held open the door of the living room and I went inside per her, past her. I stopped horrified. I was in a room I knew and did not know. I found myself in the midst of things I did want to see again but which oppressed me in the strange atmosphere or because of the tasteless way everything was arranged, because of the ugly furniture of the muggy smell that hung there. I don't know, but I scarcely dared to look around me. The girl moved a chair. I sat down and stared at the wooden tablecloth. I rubbed it. My finger grew warm from rubbing. I followed the lines of the pattern. Somewhere on the edge there should be a burn mask that had never been prepared. My mother will be back soon, said the girl. I have already made tea for her. Will you have a cup? Thank you. I looked up. The girl put cups ready on the tea table. She had a broad back, just like her mother. She poured tea from a white pot. All it had was a gold border on the lid. I remembered. She opened a box and took some spoons out. That's nice box. I heard my own voice. It was a strange voice, as though each sound was different in this room. Oh, you knew about them. She had turned round and brought me my tea. She laughed. My mother says it is antique. We have got lots more. She pointed round the room. See for yourself. I had no need to follow her hand. I knew which things she meant. I just look at the still life over the tea table. As a child, I always find the apple on the pivot plate. We use it for everything, she said. Once we even ate of the plates hanging there on the wall. I wanted to so much, but it wasn't anything special. I had found the burn mark on the tablecloth. The girl looked questioningly at them at me. Yes, I said, you get so used to touching all these lovely things in the house. You hardly look at them anymore. You only notice when something is missing because it has to be repaired or because you have lent it for example again i heard the unnatural sound on my of my voice and i went in i remember my mother once asked me if i would help her polish the silver it was a very long time ago and I was probably bored that day or perhaps I had to stay at home because I was ill as she had never asked me before. I asked her which silver she meant and she replied, surprised, eh, that it is a spoon, forks and knives of course and that was a strange thing i didn't know the curtly we ate of every day was silver the girl laughed again i bet you don't know it is either i looked intently at her what we we eat with she asked well do you know she hesitated she walked to the sideboard and wanted to open a door i look it's in here I jumped up. I was forgetting the time. I much catch my train. She had her hand on the door. Don't you want to wait for my mother? No, I must go. I walked to the door. The girl po pulled the door open. I can find my own way. As I walked down the passage, I heard the jingling of spoons and forks. 
at the corners of the road i looked up at the name plate marconi street it said i had been a number 46 the address was correct but now i didn't want to remember it any more i wouldn't go back there because the object that are linked in your memory with the familiar life of former times instantly lose their value when severed from them you see them again in strange surroundings and what should i have done with them in small rented room where the shreds of black out paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of curtly fitted in the narrow table drawer i resolved to forget the address of all the things i had to forget that would be the easiest if you like my video please subscribe like comment and share this video thank you very much for listening